why your social relationships life should be more like Fire Emblem strategy. And when your life finally, finally becomes more beautiful, if not beautiful, legitimately speaking, or even any attitude on matter, for that matter. Uh, whether you're an ambivert, so extroverted, introverted, anything like that, whether how you define that, whether however you're a st- stubborn or otherwise fixated on whatever definition of that human is, or how you even would go about it, anyways. You can both appreciate some form of socialization and alone time altogether. You need some alone time no matter who you are. You, you need some form of social engagement no matter who you are. So it's like there's a big mix into this whole thing. Like you don't – you can never truly be only introverted or extroverted. But with the ambivalent question in the mind. But I say – it's like – it's kind of like playing Fire Emblem because – you want to be someone who can d- disperse not just social relations, but uh, also life as well. But for this ba- example, like in your social life, try to make it so that when you're actually out and about, uh, whether you're – don't push yourself. No, force yourself to do anything you don't want to do. But like even in terms of comfort zone when you're getting outside of it, when you are socializing, see if you can play sort of a game. Not human game per se. Not, not Maybe not yet. Uh, but uh, – Sort of play a bit, gamify your social life a bit. Like, let's say your friend over here. Okay, doesn't have to be actual friends for troops or mercenaries, but like, let's say a whole faction or group of friends you have over here is Micaiah, the light uh uh bender, whatever. And then your other group of friends over here, and this is not just for the extroverts, but I'm just making an example for myself. But your other group of faction or, or phase of friends over here is the soft group. And then, uh, um, and then back over here is your um, your coworkers from Ike, <laughs> and Marth's uh, family is over here, and Roy's um, stranger associate neutrals, you name it, associate group is over here with uh, Roy. Yeah, and then yeah, I I just compared and contrasted completely different fire different games, whatever. I just I didn't get into Fate in Three Houses, <laughs> but uh, uh, no, nah, that's not bad. But still. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's yeah. That that's a, that's an extrovert example. But like, even extroverts don't have to socialize with every single non person. Uh, there goes my pronunciation. If you even heard that word, YouTube. Uh, you treat your social life like you're strategizing mercenaries because some of them will literally die. So we have to deal with that with the best way we can. Some of them will leave, like Shinon and Gertrude will just freaking leave the group and and path of radiance. Screw them. I mean, I mean, I, get, I mean, who needs them? I mean, uh, Godspeed to them, whatever. And then some of your friends will even still be in your life, or even be forced to be in your life. It's friends and family, all that, they'll be forced to be in your life. And you have to just have to, have to deal with that. And some of them can't be in your life, even if you want them. You have to deal with that too. And yeah, the ones we desire but can't be with us, and the ones that have to be with us for some reason, and we feel alone around them. And it's like, yeah, that kind of thing. But. Fire Emblem is, is my example of social life because, like, there's a strategy that goes into a lot of things, even if you don't want to think about anything. Maybe having some form of planning is good for some things only, but I say this because you could, you could okay, in this in this case scenario, you could overcomplicate and say, but the mercenaries are finite. There's only a certain number of them you can work with. <laughs> Extroverts complaining. No. And then the introvert's like, I don't want to socialize with most people anyways. I want just 10 people. To, like, 24 plus mercenaries is too many. <laughs> Introverts complaining. Uh, but like, uh, and then ambiverts are like, uh, you know what? I'll just take the mercenaries because at least it's a fine number I can like work with. <laughs> ambiverts being grateful. No. It's like, uh, no, but like, uh, Fire Emblem, as far as the actual game is concerned, so most people who play that game didn't even care about what trips they lost. They just work with the ones that they needed to play. They have to keep playing the game right. Because if they, leave a certain, they lose a certain mercenary for context, if they lose a certain mercenary that they actually want or needed, it makes the game harder for no apparent reason or even undesirable to play anymore. Even the aesthetic of the character could be different. But So in real life, if you lose someone in any regard that you actually cared about or even thought you needed, which you don't need anybody, that's not even an expert opinion. That's not an introverted opinion. It's just, it's, just, it's, just, it's a standard that I work with. But at the same time, if you want to make the most of what they can do to help you, introvert slash introvert opinion again, you could struggle to keep them in. But don't force it. Don't be like, I got to disperse 
all these mercenaries over here as long as this person gets to stay here. No, no, it doesn't have to be like that. I'm sorry, but it cannot be like that if that's the case. Like, you don't get to decide who stays with you even if they have, have a good reason to be with you. And that's not to be hard on anyone, but it's like you have a way to find out for yourself. When, as you learn about going to the dispersion of these Fire Emblem mercenaries, how are you going to handle things that you can't control because you never need how to want control per se. And then you're going to have to wonder, well, if these people are still in my life, whether I like it or not, what can I do in that arrangement? I do this even with YouTube where I have like, I have certain um, arrangements of channels I follow and subscribe to. I subscribe to many even now, at least lately, the long story. But I just found out that I still have one of little Finney's uh, un unlisted YouTube videos. And I, remind, I remember right, right away that I also had some of Ice Cold JT's and, uh, and Heidi and Private's, Heidi and Public's anime or talk to YouTubers, other unlisted videos. I was like, wow, these are the dispersion YouTube videos I can still watch, luckily for me. But like, I can show those with you guys if you want over time. But I, I want to respect their wishes if they have Patreon for that kind of stuff. Because I know, I know Heidi and Private did, but uh, Ice Cold JT and Finney, I can show those if I, if I need to. But, uh, or desire. You just, just ask, just comment below if you want those videos for no offense, super attention. Or on anime or talk or stuff, right? Um, but that's just with YouTube dispersion of the, the Mercenaries final example. With YouTube channels where you're like, okay, so maybe I can't watch uh, Make Me Bad 35 anymore. I can't watch. Because he, he didn't leave for, forever, but he, he just didn't make it. Oh, Ray and Benjamin came back. That was the cool part. He came back this, this week after a whole year being gone. Uh, Raz Fano left for two years and he came back he, as promised. Um, animated James had to leave indefinitely because he got bullied, side bullied a lot over the years. Um, some YouTubers left that I can't mention, mention right away for other traumatic reasons. I'll get into that later if I can. Uh, some YouTubers came back but still didn't really kickstart their YouTube channel returns as easily. And the list goes on. Treat your social life like mercenaries, like fire mercenaries. Like try to make sure that whoever is or is in your life, no matter how wicked that sounds, is done for a good strategic and fun reason. That being said, let's go on to the next topic real quick. Uh, when life suddenly becomes beautiful all over again, if even ever for the first time, if even more beautiful than you understand it anyways either way. There's a thing that uh, Hawkeye says in uh, the Mar Marvel's uh, Avengers. Don't give me hope. <laughs> Don't you dare give me hope. Do many of us wonder why Garnt slash Gugguk was right that there are enough things... And I, I made a short... I, I keep talking about this. I made a short with the, the Kill Mockingbird scene with the, the his his play over on over it. And it's like a... It's when he starts talking about... Because he, he's in he's 31 years old when he makes his video like a year or two ago. So like he's like 33, 34 right now. But almost pushing his mid-30s. And I'm 26 right now. I watched it like a year or two ago myself. It's so like 24, 25. Um, probably 25, but, so he's like 31, 32. He says to the, he basically says, um, nothing in your life will change unless you actively change something about it. Your life will stay the same if you don't change anything about it. And he also says that it seems like your 20s will rush by you and you won't really know what you're supposed to change, even though you, you still have the control to do something about it. Which, again, you never need higher one control. That's this. That's the cool discipline I work with, even if I'm still wrong about that, as well as my mentors from there. But uh, whatever mentors or anti-mentors I have at this point, which anti-mentors are still useful, not going to lie. But choose, use your own discernment what you want to have as a mentor or anti-mentor. But when your life finally becomes beautiful, do you worry about what the chronology of your story is like? Because there, are, I have friends who say identity doesn't matter, just do things. I have friends who say, understanding yourself can help you unlock layers of your story that I am just by yourself. Take that out, you will. But it's like, a, if, I, if I'm even lying about that. But I think life has already always been beautiful. I think life has more ways to be beautiful than we, than we were experienced before. So that's worth looking forward to anyways. And I would rather look forward to the next day anyways, even if tendencies of um, somber moments get to me or to even worse things I've ever encountered in my entire life have happened, have yet to happen, and then even hard things ahead of that. But if you continue to believe that there are things out there worth having, even if you're a straight-up nihilist, end card content, you'll find that life didn't actually just suddenly start being beautiful. It's just a higher heightened degree and tier of it than you're used to. But it already is beautiful. Just be okay with it the way it is, whether it's calm and normal or casual 
or extremely intense and ambitious. Take care, guys.